say we get 35 miles per gallon, um, and uh, let's assume that gas, uh, uh, the price of gas per gallon stays fixed for uh, a, a period of time. Well, as we drive, uh, 30, you know, as we drive a mile, and we pay for a gallon of gas, the cost of the gas per mile is going to stay the same. You know, because say it's three dollars and fifty cents per gallon, and we get 35 miles a gallon, so it's 10 cents per mile. Well. No matter how much we drive, it's always going to be 10 cents per mile as we drive, right? Per mile, and no matter how much we drive, it's still going to be 10 cents, all right? So that's how we say variable cost, um, cost per month it changed, but per mile it stays the same. Let's get into the fixed cost graph. Um, inversely, so we say, uh, at total fixed cost remains the same even when activity levels change. So uh, the, the, the y-axis here is insurance cost per year. And then uh, the, the x-axis is miles driven. So total insurance cost per year. No matter how much we drive, well, I guess it depends on your insurance policy, but say your insurance policy, you tell me you're going to drive 15,000 miles. All right, no matter if you drive 10,000 miles or 20,000 miles, because you already told me you're going to drive 15,000, no matter how much you drive, it's going to cost you the same amount to pay for your insurance, right? You could only drive 1,000 miles. Well, you're going to pay that same amount because you agreed to that policy, right? So say you pay $500 per year for insurance, no matter how much you drive, it's going to cost you $500. Now, uh, but if we look at it on a per unit basis, what is the annual insurance cost per mile, okay? That's the y-axis, and then the x-axis x -axis is miles driven. Now, say we spend that five hundred dollars. Well, if we if we only uh, drive a thousand miles, we're going to take the uh, five hundred divided by a thousand, and that's our cost per unit. Well, it's going to be pretty high, right? But what if we uh, drive, say, five thousand miles? Well, the five thousand uh, the five hundred over the five thousand it's going to get smaller, right? That's our per unit cost, per mile, uh, where, where it, the insurance is less per miles that we've driven. Or say we drive 15,000 miles, so the 5,000 over the 15,000 is going to be a lot less. So the, the fixed cost per unit has this sort of, this curvature, because it starts out really expensive. We're only driving 1,000 miles, but we paid $500. Uh, what is that, 50 cents or 5 cents per mile? Okay, well, as we drive more miles, it's going to get cheaper per mile per mile, right? Because we're looking at a per unit basis. It's going to get a lot cheaper the more we drive. So that's, that's sort of the, uh, the, the behavior of uh, fixed and variable costs. Now let's flip this uh, lesson uh, cheat sheet over and on the back we're going to see, in the top right, we're going to see sample balance sheets. All right. Like I said, you thought you were done with balance sheets. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to inform you, but you're not. Uh, there's going to be more balance sheets. We're going to look at balance sheets, income statements throughout managerial accounting. That's why you took financial accounting first, uh, because that a lot of that information flows through to, to what we're doing. Um, so the first balance sheet is a merchandising company's balance sheet. And as we see here, we got cash, accounts receivable, merchandise inventory, prepaid expenses, property plan equipment, total assets. That's what a merchandising company's look like, uh, balance sheet looks like. But now a manufacturing company's balance sheet looks a lot different. Uh, well, not too much different, but the inventory section looks a lot different. Remember, uh, we told you that you know there's different components of inventory to a manufacturing company. Well, that's what we show here. We got raw materials, work in process, finished goods. Those different components make up our inventory balance because we're actually making that stuff. We're manufacturing. We're a manufacturing company. We're manufacturing those. We take direct materials. We take direct labor. We take manufacturing overhead. We put it into a product. Um, we, so we have raw materials. We have work in process, and we have finished goods. A merchandising company will buy from a manufacturing company and so the costs to them they don't put extra uh, pro uh, materials or they don't put anything additional into that product they just buy it from the manufacturer and sell it so th there's a singular cost there's not a com different components of the cost that's why there's a, a single line item merchandise inventory whereas inventory for a manufacturing company has got those three components all right now schedule of cost of goods manufacturing you got this big green uh, chart um, to the left here. This is going to be an important thing to understand because we're going to go through how these costs flow through the different uh, uh, sort of inventory, inventory um, buckets 
Um, but we're also including manufacturing costs, and that's why this is a schedule of, co of cost of goods manufactured. Um, and then we're going to go through an example, but first I'm going, to, I'm going to walk you through this process. So we take beginning raw, raw materials, we add raw materials purchased. That equals our raw materials available for use in production. Uh, we subtract our ending raw materials uh, inventory, and the difference between what we have available and what we have left was what we used during the period. And so this, uh, this schedule has to be for a period. It could be a week, month, uh, year, but it has to be for a period because during a certain period we had, well, at the beginning of the period we had something, right? We had this level of raw materials. At the end of the period we had something, but in between we purchased some stuff. So what we have left is the difference between that has to be what we used and what we used we call raw materials used in production and that flows through to manufacturing costs uh, as direct materials. Remember on the other side we had that um, that flow chart that said direct direct materials, direct labor manufacturing over it, and direct materials flew or uh, flowed to raw materials inventory. Well, that's what's happening right here. Raw materials used in production. That's direct materials, right? Those are these are our manufacturing costs. Then we add direct labor. We add manufacturing overhead. That equals our total manufacturing costs. Those manufacturing costs as we use them, go into work and process, right? Because we're creating something, we're, we're building something, we're making something. So those total manufacturing costs go over to, uh, to work and process. But beginning, we have to add beginning work and process to everything that we put in for the period. That equals our total work and process for the period. Then we subtract what we have left at the period, and the difference is our cost of good manufacture. Uh, so we have uh, some beginning work in process, the stuff we didn't complete uh, at the uh, end of last period, so it's our beginning balance. Then we have all these manufacturing costs that we um, incurred during that period. So then we add those together, and those are our total costs available, or total work in process for the period. Then so we subtract what's left, and the difference has to be what we used or transferred to finished goods. So we take this cost of goods manufactured, and we add it to finished goods. But finished goods, we had a beginning balance. Most of the time, we can assume we have a beginning balance, unless stated otherwise. So we take our beginning finished goods balance. We, caught, well, we add our cost of finished goods manufactured. That equals finished goods available for sale. Then we subtract what's left at the end of the period, and the difference must be what we sold, right? The cost of goods sold. So that, uh, or the cost of finished goods sold, and that goes to the income statement as cost of goods sold. So that, that's how the schedule of cost of goods manufactured flows. Right, this, you're probably going to see this in your homework, you're going to see this in problems. This is a good um, chart to, to understand how costs flow through a manufacturing uh, system. Now, let's go through an example uh, of how to prepare this schedule of cost of goods manufactured. We're going to start uh, at the left and move to the right. So we're going to start at the bottom and, and we're going to ha have some given information. Uh, it says, assume HMS Round Belly Inc. HMS Round Belly Inc. For those of you that bought uh, the financial accounting course, this is a, uh, the, the company that we use throughout our lessons. HMS Round Belly Inc., it's, it's a company. Um, they make all sorts of products uh, for boats. They make boats. Um, uh, they make uh, accessories for boats. They make everything to do with boats. Um, but that boat, HMS Round Belly Inc., that boat is somewhat of a metaphor for understanding how accounting works. In financial accounting, you know, uh, HMS Round Belly took us through uh, balance sheet transactions, income statement transactions, to the statement of retained earnings, all the way through uh, coming up with a, a statement of cash flows. Uh, HMS Round Belly gave us different examples. We, we, you know, it was a company. We went through all that stuff, and it sort of took us on that journey. It took us all the way through financial accounting so that we could understand accounting. Similar for uh, managerial accounting, we got HMS Round Belly Inc. The company is also it's 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 taking us to this not so exotic, not so exciting land of managerial accounting, but it's taking us there as we're going, we're understanding how managerial accounting works so that when we finally arrive, when we finally get to that final exam, we understand what it is that uh, managerial accounting is. So HMS Round Belly Inc., you're going to see throughout fi uh, managerial accounting, you saw it throughout financial accounting, it's the, it's the ship, it's the company that takes us through all these different concepts, all right? So, you know, just understand that. So when you see HMS Round Belly Inc., or round belly, that's the company that is going to take us through all of these examples. All right, so assume HMS Round Belly Inc. had beginning 
raw materials inventory of A, 17,000. And then the reason we put the A's here because those A's directly correlate to um, our raw materials, manufacturing costs, work and process, finished goods. And so that you can understand how we take the, the given information from a problem, apply it to a scheduled cost of good manufacturer so that when you're doing a homework, so when you're taking an exam, you can say, okay, I've, I'm given this information, I know where that goes. All right? So that, that's the purpose of these problems is to say, uh, you know, accounting is not very exciting. It doesn't change very much. And so if you take and you understand mechanically how one problem works, you can apply it to any other problems. It's just you're going to be given um, this information and you have to find out that information. Whereas in another problem, you're going to be given that information you have to find out this information. I give you all of the information, tell you where it goes, tell you how it works, so that when you get to your exam you, or you get to your homework, you, you understand mechanically how all this works so that it, uh, you know, so that you can you know, pass your class. I mean, that's ultimately what we want to do is, is give you the knowledge to succeed uh, so that you, know, you can pass your class. Anyway, getting back to this. Uh, assume HMS Round Bell Inc. had beginning raw materials inventory of A, 17,000. During the month, uh, B, 325,000 of raw material was purchased. A count at the end of the month revealed that C, 42,000 of raw materials was still present. Calculate raw materials used in production. Okay, so we're given A, beginning raw materials. You put that there. Uh, we're given B, 325,000 of raw materials purchased. That, add those two together, that gives us our raw uh, materials available for use in production. All right. And then we, uh, then we know what our ending raw materials balance is. That's C. Well, we subtract those and we get 300,000 and that must be the uh, direct materials used for the period, right? Remember the flow up here? Well, that it flows the same way. Let's go to manufacturing costs table down here. Let's figure out how this flows. Given information, assume direct labor was D, 415,000, and factory overhead was E, 125,000 for the same month. Calculate manufacturing costs incurred for the month. All right. Just like in this example above, we're given, uh, so the 300,000 of direct materials flows there, and then we're given D, uh, 415,000, and we're given E, uh, 125,000. All those costs are costs incurred for the month, right? Manufacturing costs incurred for the month, 840,000. Remember in the chart up here, well, those costs flow up into work and process. All right, let's, so let's get, go through the work and process given information. Assume beginning work and process was uh, F, up 86,000, and there were G, 150,000 of partially finished goods remaining in, the, in work and process at the end of the month. Calculate cost of goods manufactured for the month. Okay, so we're given uh, F, the beginning balance, 86,000. Uh, we, we, we take our 840 that we calculated down here in manufacturing costs, add that, come up with 926,000 total work and process during the period. We know what our ending work and process is, G, 150,000. You subtract that you get our total cost of goods manufactured. Now, go over to finished goods. We're given some information. Assume beginning finished goods inventory was H101,000 and the ending finished goods inventory was I112,000. Calculate cost of finished goods sold. Now, we take our beginning finished goods inventory that was given uh, 101, that was H. Then we take the cost of finished goods manufactured. We take that from our work in process. That flows through here, 760,000, 776,000. Add those two together, we get 877,000. Subtract I, 112,000. That was our ending finished goods inventory. And we get cost of finished goods sold, 765,000. All right, that's how you put together from given information the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. And remember, the, the, these, this cost of goods manufactured relates to what the, the flow chart we had on the other side where we took product costs, we had direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, that flowed to raw materials inventory, then the work and process inventory, then the finished goods, then the cost of goods sold. Well, this is a, a, a graphic or a sort of, sort of um, a, a, a a schedule of how those, you know, we had the flow chart on the other side, now we have this schedule. We go through the problem. If you didn't understand it, go watch the lesson over, review the lesson cheat sheet, uh, and you'll be able to understand how this works mechanically, so then you'll be able to uh, do your homework and do your uh, uh, problems on the exam. Thank you.